Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Tip of the Week. If you're seeing this tip someplace else, please be sure to come back by our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details. I'll provide links to the resource I'm talking about today, links to the publications, and so on. So check us out at blog.openhelix.com. The resource that I'll be focusing on today is one that you might be hearing about in the news. If you've been following the stories about this emerging flu virus in China, this H7N9 virus, you'll know that researchers in China are actively seeking out sources of these viruses to test. So in this article by Declan Butler in Nature, we find that researchers are actively seeking out patients that might have been affected by these viruses or samples from poultry markets. And they take these isolates, they determine the sequence information from the viruses, and they upload this to a publicly accessible database for researchers around the world to explore. So what you might see in a news story, for example, is something like virologists are sequencing more and posting them on the GIS-8 flu database. I became curious about this GIS-8 flu database and I wanted to take a look at that. So what I'll do today is give you a little tour of the GIS-8 foundation resources and the EpiFlu database that contains these sequences. So now let's turn our attention to the GIS-8.org website and we'll explore some of the features that are available to researchers from this site. Here I'm on the welcome tab and I'll, I'll highlight a few of the things that are available from this site. First of all, I should mention that I am showing you this as a logged in and registered user of this site. If you want to have access to the data that's available at the GISAID site, you do have to agree to the terms of use. At the top of the page here, you'll have a link to the data access agreement that explains your rights and responsibilities as a user of the GISAID.org site. So please be sure to check that out, register for access here, and, and understand those terms. They've highlighted a few of the key principles here, though, and I would just like to mention those briefly. If you are going to use the data at this site, you are required to acknowledge the data contributors. So there are researchers around the world who are, are risking their health and their lives sometimes to provide the samples that you will have access to here. So keep that in mind and be sure to acknowledge their contributions. You're also required to make the best effort to collaborate with these folks. There are a couple of ways within the gisaid.org website where you can reach out to these folks right away, and I'll highlight those as we go forward. Another key point that I have to make here is that you may not disclose the data outside of the GISAID community here, so you cannot share the data with anyone who has not registered and agreed with the terms of use here. Keep that in mind. You have responsibilities about disclosing this data. Understand that as you use the data from the GISAID.org site. A few other important features about the site here. Let me just mention those, those right now. First of all, it's graciously hosted by the German government, and there are more things you can learn about the site here from the home page. You can learn more about the details of the GIS-8 Foundation's mission. You can learn some more about the EpiFlu database, but we'll be focusing on that soon. Also, I would encourage you to understand their transparency and responsible sharing philosophies here, and you can learn more about their governance from here as well. Also on the home page, you'll find news that's relevant to researchers that are accessing the site, and there might be conferences and publications that you might be interested in related to the GIS-8.org site. Those are some of the features of the home page. I'll also note that there's a news tab where you can access some other features of the site too. Here though, I'd like to mention the registered users tab. You can access the full list of everyone who has agreed to the terms of use here. There's a key point that I would like to make about that. I won't show you the entire list of registered users, but I will show you my profile. I entered a few features here. The key point that I wanted to make about this is that right on the bottom of the page, there's a contact member button. From here, you can generate an email. This is one of the two ways that I wanted to emphasize that you can reach out to any of the other researchers who are contributing to the GISAID.org site. We'll focus on another later. Now let's turn our attention to the EpiFlu database. So now we find ourselves on the EpiFlu tab. This is the relational database that stores all that information from researchers around the world who have provided it to the GISAID resource. So if you are one of the researchers who wants to upload sequences to the EpiFlu resource, you can choose the upload function right here. Let me show you that quickly. Here, if you have a sample you wanted to share with the world, you can provide the isolate details, sample information, and a number of other types of things that you might know. And you can see here that the record details here are different from a typical GenBank record. There's a huge range of people who might need information about samples that are provided here. Clinicians might need information about this sample. There are epidemiologists who would want to use the information here. Even researchers who study bird migrations would have different needs. There's a wide range of researchers here that are served by the EpiFlu database, so you'll see that the fields are different. But if you do have a sample to upload, you can generate the record here. You can save that and then release that to the public. 
that's if you have one sample, that would be the way to go. If you had a number of different samples, there is a batch upload function as well. I won't show you this now, but you should be aware that this is available too to do a large scale upload. For now, let's return to the browse page. When the samples are uploaded and released, they become available for you to browse. You can browse in a number of different ways. There are some basic filters here with some predefined searches you could use, for example, or you could search for specific patterns in the records. One of the things that you can do is choose the type, the subtype. So what I'm going to do is specify that I want type A, H7, N9 samples. And I could set this. And then I could choose to indicate whether I wanted a host, but in this case I won't. I'll just obtain all the samples. And I could specify a location here, as you can see. There might be times when you wanted to choose only recent submissions. You could set the submission date filter for that. Or you could locate a sample that might have come from a specific laboratory that you heard about. So you could choose to search by submitting laboratory as well. In this case, though, I will choose to look just for that specific type of virus that I was interested in. If I click the search button, I will obtain those results. Let me adjust the columns for you so you can have a look at my results list. So here in the results list, you can see that all of my samples are in fact H7N9 subtype. I have added a column to my fields here. Uh, you can, in your settings here, you can add the collection date column to be visible. That's what I've done, and you can see that there are some recent samples that are available here, which are crucial, of course. But it's also great to have these older samples as well, so we can see, we can compare from these older samples to the new samples to see if there have been important changes. From the results list, there are a number of actions that you can perform. One of them, of course, is to look at an individual record. I can't show you all of the record details, but I have been given permission to show you one of the records, so I will be clicking this on we sample here to give you a look at one of those records. So here's a sample that has been provided by the Chinese CDC. So thanks very much to the Chinese CDC for offering us the opportunity to see this sample. You can see that you have access to all the sequence details that have been provided here and any other items that have been included in the upload. So thanks very much to Dr. Lei Yang who has provided us with access to this. Another key feature of the record though at this point is that from here all you have to do is click this contact submitter button. If you are going to use these sequences for further analysis, contact these submitters and collaborate with them right from this page here. So the GISA database makes it very easy for you to contact any of these researchers to provide your thanks and for the opportunity to collaborate with them. Again, thanks very much to the Chinese CDC and the team of Dr. Lei Yang. Let me go back to the results list to show you some other things that you can do at this point. So you can look at the individual records or you can do actions that include a number of records. So I'm going to take all of these 2013 submissions and I could click the check boxes here. And at this point, I could download all of those sequences. So if I had tools that I wanted to use on my desktop, for example, I could download those sequences and analyze them with tools that I might have. There are some tools built in right into the GISAID system, though. If you click the Analysis button here, you could take all of the sequences that you've selected and run BLAST analysis on these. So you could look for related sequences in the database. Alternatively, you could choose to do a multiple sequence alignment. There's a JALView installation that will let you perform a multiple sequence alignment and compare these sequences with each other. So that's very handy as well. So there are a number of things that you can do at this point. You can explore the individual records, you can perform analyses, or you can download any of these sequences for further analysis. So let's just return to the browse interface to give you again an idea of how that would work. Researchers who upload these sequences make them available for the world, and you can browse for the right sequences that you might be interested in with the functions here available in the EpiFlu database. Let me just return to the Welcome tab one more time. I hope that you enjoyed this quick tour of the resources available at the GISAID Foundation site at gisaid.org. I hope that it helps you to understand how the EpiFlu database is used to store flu virus data and make it available to researchers, fostering collaboration worldwide on serious public health matters. Thanks very much for your time.